this section, we're going to be discussing a group of integrals called improper integrals. Um, so let's think of the following as our um, motivating application. Um, it's known that the energy required to launch a rocket from the surface of the Earth, um, in other words, at a distance of um, 6,370 kilometers from the center of the Earth, to an altitude h is given by an integral of the form, the integral from r to r plus h of um, k over x squared dx. Okay where k is a constant that includes a bunch of information including the mass of the rocket, mass of Earth, and the gravitational constant. So suppose we want to launch that rocket to an arbitrarily large altitude h so that it can escape Earth's gravity. So the energy required is then given by the following integral, an integral from r to infinity of k over x squared dx. So how can we think about evaluating um, integrals of this type, where I have an interval that's not just between two numbers, but maybe from some number up to infinity? So this is one of the kinds of things that we want to be thinking about. So let's just remind ourselves what it is that allows us to um, evaluate definite integrals to begin with, and that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the fundamental theorem of calculus told us that if our function f is a continuous function, on the closed interval from a to b, Okay. Then we could take the integral from a to b of f of x dx and find the antiderivative, call that big F, evaluate it from a to b, and then we'd be looking at the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. Okay. So we have these two important conditions that allowed us to do this evaluation. We have f is continuous on the interval, and we also have that the interval is closed. So let's look at two examples that violate those conditions. Okay. So if we consider the following example, an integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx, we want to ask ourselves, does the fundamental theorem apply? Okay, well, the interval in this situation is an interval from 1 to infinity, so the problem with that is it's not a closed interval. Okay, so the fundamental theorem does not apply. So we're just thinking through why we're going to need a new technique and why we can't use um, what we already know about evaluating integrals. Basically, I can't plug infinity into my antiderivative. Infinity isn't a number. Just to think about what we're looking at here, this is my graph of 1 over x. I'm thinking about something to do with the area under my curve 1 over x from 1 to infinity, okay, as far to the right as I could go with this. Okay, so when we have this sort of type where I have an infinite interval, an infinitely large interval here, that's what we're going to call an improper integral of type 2, excuse me, of type 1. Okay. And so we'll have to learn some techniques for how we're going to handle that sort of um, integral. So what's the problem over here? Well, I have an integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x dx. That seems fine initially. I mean, I'd have numbers in here. I don't have infinity as my bounds. But the problem is that 1 over x is not continuous at 0. So we're violating that other condition of the fundamental theorem that our function be continuous over the whole interval. So our fundamental theorem does not apply. Okay, so in terms of a picture, what is this thinking about? Well, this is thinking about the area under the curve between 0 and 1. So it's something like this, where this is going up vertically as far as I, I can go. So I have this um, infinite discontinuity. I actually have a vertical asymptote at 0. Okay, so when we have this sort of situation where I have my integral 
or my integrand not being continuous over the interval or having this infinite discontinuity at some point in the interval, this is an improper integral of type 2. Okay, so that just gives you the big picture of what kinds of integrals that we're going to be talking about. Um, we have types with an infinite interval where we're going to have to figure out how to handle those, and then we also have these types where the integrand is discontinuous at some point over the interval. Well, what's the solution going to be in each of these cases? The solution is that we're going to need limits. We're going to involve limits in order to take these um, integrals. So in this video, we're going to define um, what we do in the case with type 1, and in a later video, we'll go through the definition of improper integrals of type 2 and, and what kind of limits we need in that case. So for dealing with our improper integrals of type 1, okay, and this is the, the more obvious case where you'll be able to tell right away that it's improper because you'll see either infinity or negative infinity as one of the bounds. So if we have one of these situations, if our function is continuous on the interval from a to infinity, okay, so it's defined everywhere in there, we just happen to have an unbounded um, interval, then what I'll do is I'll take that integral and I'll rewrite it using a limit where I'll replace infinity with some variable. The definitions tend to use t, but you can use whatever letter you want there. And then think about what's happening as t approaches infinity. So I'm taking this integral from a to infinity of f of x dx and writing it as a limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from a to t of f of x dx. Okay, so our function here now is continuous on the interval from a to t, and that's a nice closed interval. So we can use the fundamental theorem on this integral from a to t of f of x dx. Okay? So we'll see as we're working through these improper integrals, we'll take our improper integral, write it as a limit, then we'll do all the usual sort of stuff with integration techniques on this piece here. Okay, I'll find the antiderivative of f, evaluate it at these limits from a to t, and then I'm going to have some expression in terms of t whose limit I will need to take. Okay? So an example of something that was this type would be like our integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. Okay. So what about if I have the situation where my function is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to b, okay, instead of going from a number up to positive infinity? Well, again, we're going to write this as a limit, but now I'll have my variable replace negative infinity. So this would be from t to b as t approaches negative infinity, of f of x dx. Okay. And again, you have your function f of x is now continuous on the interval from t to b. Okay, so you can apply the fundamental theorem on that part, get an expression in terms of t, and then take the limit as t goes to negative infinity. Okay. So at this point, I'm also just going to introduce a little bit of terminology that will be involved when we're doing these limits of these quantities, because sometimes this limit is going to come out to be a number, and sometimes this limit is going to come out to be um, infinity or negative infinity, or maybe it turns out that the limit doesn't exist. So we say that the integral in all of these, these different cases converges specifically that the improper integral converges if the limit exists as a finite number and otherwise we say it diverges. Okay, so we're going to be rewriting these integrals as limits we're going to be evaluating those limits, and then we're going to be drawing some kind of conclusion about what that limit applies in terms of whether the improper integral converges to some number or whether it diverges. Okay. So the last case that we could have um, is that our function is continuous from negative infinity 
excuse me, negative infinity to infinity, and we're trying to evaluate the integral from negative infinity to infinity. So we've got it um, being a problem sort of at both endpoints. Instead of a number to infinity or negative infinity to a number, I now have negative infinity to infinity. So the way we'll handle this is to break it up into two pieces. So we pick some number in between and look at the integral from negative infinity to let's say a of f of x dx plus the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx. Okay, And then we handle each of these two, pa two pieces according to um, the two above rules. So for negative infinity to a, I replace negative infinity with some letter. Look at the limit as I approach negative infinity. Let's say I used t for negative infinity. I'd take the limit as t goes to negative infinity of the integral from t to a of f of x dx. And for this part here, I could replace infinity with some other letter. Let's just say s. And then I could be looking at this as um, with the limit as s goes to infinity of an integral from a to s of f of x dx. So how do we determine convergence or divergence in this last case? Well, we're going to say that the integral converges if both of these integrals converge. Okay, so if you have to break it up into two pieces, you're going to have to say that this left-hand side converges only if each of these two things um, converge to some finite number. If at least one diverges, then we say that the integral diverges. Okay. So when you have some situation that you're presented with, with an integral from negative infinity to infinity of some function, you'll write down the sum of that integral as these two pieces, and then you'll start with evaluating one of these pieces on its own. Because if one of those pieces diverges, you don't even have to go evaluate the second one. You'll say this first piece diverges, so the whole thing diverges. If you find that your first piece converges, then you have to go ahead and evaluate that second piece. Okay, if that second piece also converges, you know that your original integral converges. If that second piece diverges, then that means your integral over here also diverges. Okay. So this gives us an introduction to improper integrals overall and specifically how to work with improper integrals of type 1. Um, look at the next several videos to see some examples of computing um, integrals of this first type using the limit definition.